Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Week. We've had another exciting few weeks going on with some of the amazing guests you've all have just watched. If you've missed any, please go back. But today I interviewed a lady called Beck Murray. She's in education. She's a teacher. I've met her on my teaching rounds as a, a casual teacher here in Australia. She's at a beautiful little school out in the countryside, about an hour away from me. Um, I've always really enjoyed Car Beck's character. She's, um, she's outgoing. She's committed. Um, she's just someone I can definitely connect with and have a great conversation with. Little did I know uh, until I deeply connect with her that she lost her father to a horrific scenario. I will again let Beck go into that. We talk about her being diagnosed with diabetes type 1 and, and how she had dealt with that going into life and her great perspective on that as well. It's a unique perspective, um, but I think it's a, a great mentality to have. Um, and you'll understand why she has that perspective too. Um, we also talk about her childhood in the sense uh, that, you know, she's always wanted to give uh, and has that energy to give. And you'll, you'll get that from her in our conversation too. Um, but she's always felt that she's a bit too much. Um, I definitely relate to that because I'm a talkative person too. And I've always pretty much felt that. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely felt it was worth um, having a chat with Beck and uh, you'll see how she's leading her own way. Uh, so tune into part one, if you're watching on YouTube, um, but we're going to do the full episodes on Apple Apple and Spotify every Wednesday and YouTube, like I said, gets split up into five parts. It's a bit of a new thing. I hope you're enjoying that format, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, but if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe, I'm trying to get the show out further and further and further. So it's just a button, I'm not asking for any cash, just press. Anyway, we'll be back in 21 seconds after the intro with Beck Murray. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Welcome, Bette Murray, to Leading Our Own Way. How are you today? Good, thanks, Andy. How are you? Oh, I'm great. All the better for seeing you, Beck. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for joining me on my journey uh, on the podcast. I, I really appreciate your time. Um, I, I believe you've done a podcast before. Yes, just recently. Oh, um, nice. With another, um, well, now friend. Um, he's a type 1 diabetic and he was just talking about uh, other people with type, uh, type 1 and um, got to do with he's going to do an ultra marathon and how other people deal with um, running and being type 1s and what I do. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. And I know we will touch on that briefly during the um, during the episode. Um, but how did you go on the podcast? Was it was it weird? Because I'm getting used to this now, even though I'm still much of a very much of a rookie. Yeah. <laughs> how you got, how did you go with it? Um, it was very much just a casual chat because um, the person that I did it with, we actually hadn't met before. Um, we'd just spoken. I'd seen him on social media, and I liked what he was doing, so I reached out and I said, you know, really love what you're doing. I'm a runner too. Um, don't think I want to do ultra marathons, but I've just done my first half and, you know, this is what I use because he was talking about how he was having a lot of hypos and what he used. And I said, oh, well, I use this. I don't know if that'll help you, but this is what I use. So then, yeah, we started chatting from there and then got along really well. And he was like, "I, you know, I'm wanting to start this type one run club and I'd love you to be on it. And yeah, nice. you know, help organize it with me. I was like, sweet, that'd be amazing. So, yeah, we did that. And then we did it once we did the podcast, we met up and did a run together. And yeah, now he's traveling around Australia and doing a run every week, kind of putting out to other type ones when he's in a certain area where he'll be and what they can do to meet up and run together. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Well, to your story, Beck, uh, you've been on a bit of a journey um, in your life. But if we were going to categorize this episode today, and you're going to, and the viewers were going to go, right, what's this episode about? If you could think one of a, one or two couple of words to sum up before we get into it, what do you think those categories or words or phrases would be? Um, maybe perseverance. Mm. Um capabilities vulnerabilities i don't know yeah well okay well what, 
when so the story between between Becky and I, everybody is, um, I'm a I turned into a casual teacher to do this, and um, Beck's also in education. We met at one of the a, a very small country school. We won't give the names away, but um, a very cute little school. And you came across to me as this very confident, outgoing, knowing what she wants sort of person. As we've got to know each other. Um, it more and more comes to me about insecurities to people and, and it's not always what it seems to be. Since we've got to know each other and we've had these vulnerable conversations, it's been so nice to understand your inner feelings. What What is it for you, do you think? Uh, what insecurities, because you've just brought it up with vulnerabilities, what are some of your vulnerabilities then, do you think? Um, I guess I always have a strong demeanour. Well, like you said, I... I feel I come across as someone that is, you know, real confident, real capable, um, you know, has a lot of drive, motivation, all of those things. But I think with everyone, but when talking about me, it's not always the case. You're not always so motivated to do something. You're not always, um, you know, as confident as you may show, mm-hmm. Um I think a lot of the time I feel like I give a lot and don't get a lot in return. Mm-hmm. And I think we've said before that um, it's not that you it's not that you do something to get something in return, but sometimes it's nice to hear that. Yeah, you know, I, someone appreciates what you've put in. Do do you where do you get those feelings from? Is it the workplace? Is it um, adulthood with friends, family, colleagues? Where do you think that comes from? Feeling like that? Mine comes from the originally probably from the workplace. Maybe a fear, a, a approval, looking for approval in life from maybe I don't know childhood, adulthood, whatever it may be. Where do you think it comes from for you? I think as a kid, I'm I've always been, you know very fr- I feel that I'm a very friendly person and you are. I think you know I was always trying to make friends with others and be positive and you know I just wanted to be part of something and sometimes I think that can come across to other people as too much mm. and that you don't always receive that same friendship and same positivity and same want to be part of something back and Mm. that's where it makes you start questioning things about yourself and that in itself really hurts yeah you're like i didn't i didn't see that that was a bad thing i thought i was being nice but they've taken it as i've been overbearing and too much but they never said anything until it gets to a point and then that's upsetting because you're like, well, how long were they thinking that for? Was it just a moment? Was it in the in the moment mm. that it happened or has it been a long time? So you just constantly start cutting yourself down mm. and questioning everything about yourself and then you're left there feeling terrible and questioning how you're going to now go on from this point forward. It's like you have to be a million different people to cater for every character and, and person that you meet, don't you, in a way, yeah. if that makes sense. And I think everyone wants to be acknowledged. Yeah. Well, some people don't, I guess. Um, but, you know, everyone wants to know that they're doing the right thing or told that they're doing the right thing or it's appreciated what they're doing. Uh, you know, my mum, she's retired now, but she was a nurse and for a very long time, about 40 years, And she said she can remember on one hand how many times she was ever thanked um, Mm. for doing her job. And she said, it's not that I did it for that reason, but it's nice to hear someone appreciate all of the hard work and time and effort that you're putting into looking after these people, Mm. families and, you know, helping doctors and doing those other things. And she said, you know, sometimes you needed to hear that and it just wasn't coming yeah yeah and that goes on the umbrella of, uh, of connection and relationships doesn't it it's mm. it's all to do with connection and relationships you you know what i mean i we i think we're lacking that big time um, yeah do you, so you mentioned before about overbearing and being too much what gives you the inkling that are the what are some of the behaviors from other people um give you that um 
view of over overbearing to others do you think what it what 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 it what do you think it is you know it could be something as simple as like when I was a kid um you know there was someone who you know I got along with really well and I'd you know give them a call or I'd write to them and I didn't always necessarily hear things back and it wasn't until my mum had said to me she's just like you invest so much into others they need to be investing back in you Mm. and I think even as a kid like I remember we were in mum's room and talking about it and I was just like yeah well that that person really they aren't writing back as much as I would like or I would hope or you know they're not um I don't know how to word it they're not giving back what I am giving what what I saw I was giving them yeah um it, yeah it's like that dating game isn't it when you're young when somebody's like texting you all the time you're like yeah they're there whenever I need them because they're giving me that energy so I don't need to worry but when they stop you start to go hmm okay so yeah. then you go back it's like it's kind of like that I always used to feel like that I could never be that bad boy guy like I could never not text back I was like it was me doing the texting <laughs> you know yeah I mean um so how how do you feel that you're leading your own way because you've been on a bit of a journey but right now physically mentally emotionally professionally how do you think how do you feel you're leading your own way um I think in being a little bit more vulnerable Mm -hmm. I I feel like there's a lot of strength in vulnerability um but that's also a very hard thing to be vulnerable with people because not that I've had a hard exterior, but I've always kind of felt when I've gone through things, I just kind of go, I just got to do it. I've just got to go ahead and do it. And, you know, even when these terrible things happen, those, per, you know, these people need me. So I can't break. I've got to be the pillar of strength up until they don't need me. Yeah. And, Even in my workplace, I'm very lucky that I have such a supportive workplace because I know in so many instances people don't. But I've, you know, I felt I started off really strong. You know, when you come out of the gates, you start off really strong in running in anything and then you start to peter off because you're getting tired and burnt out and, you know, you can't keep that same pace up. Mm. And for me, that's where I've had to be vulnerable and say, I can't keep this up and this is why. And that's a really hard thing to let the walls down and say, well, I'm actually struggling and I didn't want you to know that, but clearly I'm not doing the best of jobs at hiding it anymore because it's affecting things. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I think that strength in vulnerability that I've just been like I have to be more frank with myself but also with others because nothing's going to change if I don't what what's the crossover to going from that strong pride uh, I don't want to be vulnerable to seeing the power of vulnerability I that's the question that I'm I think where I've been at over the last few years is crossing over to that vulnerability and going well I've always been an open book and I feel like you have as well um but what do you think for those who do struggle, what do you think that crossover from being strong, pride, I'm not going to talk, to being vulnerable, seeing the safety and vulnerability? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is that we are only on this earth for such a short amount of time. Yeah. And what is the point in spending our time being unhappy and just floating through a day just to get through to the next one when you know I could be happier so you know there was a point in time where I'm sure we might talk about it more but um something happened in our family it was very tragic and very sudden and it just made me reassess things really quickly like who do I need to be in this time right now, I need to be a pillar of strength for others. But when the time comes that I can break, I'm going to need those people as well. So, you know, 
I left a job that I loved, really loved that place. I loved the people. I loved the kids. It was just like if I could move that place to where I am now, I'd just be the happiest person. Hmm. But as you know, in any job, not everyone stays. So even if I had done that and, and not left when I did, others left and things change and those kids will move on to high school and those families will not have a child at that school anymore so that family will then move away. So I just had to think long term of how am I going to be happy in the long, well, short and long term and what do I need to do? And that's really hard. It's like that whole ripping off a Band-Aid thing, making the decision. It had been in my head for a while. I just had to do it. Yeah. We, we we need to look at being happy. We've lost the art of happiness, I think. We've, we substitute pleasure for happiness today in the modern day with everything that we've got. And not that there's anything wrong with pleasure, but pleasure short term and happiness long term. And those, what you did after that horrific event that you, you, you went through, you and your family went through, you, you, you made a really good decision for long term basis. Uh, mm. and, and it's having the foresight rather than having the hindsight later down the track, isn't it? You know? Yeah. So, okay, so what was the pivotal event that happened in your life? And, and obviously, which has led us to having this conversation today. What's the event that happened to you? And you don't need to go into great deeds because we will, we will go back a little bit to your childhood because I think there's some beautiful characters, characteristics that we have to talk about that sums up and will piece everything together and that people can get from you and fall in love with your personality and character. But what was the event that really kind of was that pivotal point that changed for you and your family? Um, so 12 years ago this month, um, my father was um, killed in an accident and it was, you know, sudden and very tragic and horrific and just my whole life changed in seconds, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was something that has really made me reassess your whole life, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and I know you're going to be open and vulnerable about that particular day and the time shortly after that leading up to this point. But how have you, I really want the viewers to go, okay, well, we know what's happened. We know it's horrific and someone's so close to you that it shouldn't happen to anyone. But what are you, how are you using that now to change you and others? And I suppose lead your, lead your own way off that horrific trauma. Yeah. Um, I think with grief, grief is not a linear thing. Mm. Um, and in the moment when it happened, I kind of went into that fight or flight mode. And, you know, at the start I was like, no, no, it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. He'll, he'll come home. It's all good. Like I just need to work through this and help my mum and sister and we'll be fine. You know, and then as a few days passed, I was like, okay, no, this has happened. What do we do now? Okay, I'm going into that mode again of, right, we've got to organise the funeral and do this and do this and do this and, and then I'll get to another point where I can reassess. Like you're constantly just reassessing. But I think for me, I never wanted to get to a point that I was leading myself down a deep, dark rabbit hole and not going to be able to get myself out. I just, I was making it my purpose that I was getting up every day, even though I felt shitty, I was still getting up because there's still other people here that need me to get up. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. need to get up for them. And I'm, I'm glad you said the word purpose because I'm all for purpose. I mean, I've even got it in my book and we, t and this is the reason, one of the key words in this bio is purpose. And we will talk about purpose at the end because I will ask you that question. But what are you doing in the modern day then to not do what you've just said, go into that rabbit hole, into that dark, deep space that most of us would if we're very close to our mum and dad and that happened to us in that horrific way. What are you doing to, to, to use that as your life purpose then? What are you doing today? Um, I kind of came up with the mantra like that I now work, walk for the both of us. Yes, so because I love that. Dad can't, 
be experiencing these things with me, mm. I'll do it for him at the same time. So, you know, like three weeks after the funeral, um, I was finishing off uni and doing all of those things. So, and I had to go on rounds. And everyone was like, you don't have to be here. You know, we can just get your grades off what you're, you've you already done. You don't have to be here. Be with your family. I was like, no, because dad would be royally pissed if I did not finish this. Like he would have been like, no, go. What are you doing? Like I think I just always had him in the back of my mind and I still do these days. I think I'm honest in the fact that it's not, as often as some people may think. I think, you know, at the start you do have them in your head all the time. Yeah. You know, or you feel guilty for laughing or for being happy because this terrible thing happened and you shouldn't be happy because this terrible thing happened Yeah, you and your family. But yeah. for me I always had that, well, he would want me to do this or he would want to see me happy. Yeah. So these days I think about, you know, I left that job because I'm like, am I happy in it? No. <laughs> you know, or my main thing when having job interviews and they said, well, why would you want this job or why did you leave this position or other things? And I said, because I wasn't happy. Mm. And if I'm only here for a short amount of time, I want to do it right and I want to be yeah. happy. Yeah. You know, I think that's a big, powerful thing. But also when you're doing things for others or you have that other person in the back of your mind, it gives you when you're feeling terrible and you're not motivated, you're like, well, at least I can get up and go for a run. I'll go for a run. Yeah. You know, because he can't. And and that's actually a really good point because I didn't know any of this when we'd worked together. I never knew what you were doing. And then when we added each other on social media, all of a sudden I see this face talking to the camera every night. And it was brilliant. And I was like, why is this why is Beck running all of a sudden? Is she going on a fitness fitness kick here? Well, changing her life for some reason. But there's more to it, isn't it? The runs, there's more to it with the runs. What are what are the runs all about? Well, I do love running. So yeah. Thing. That helps. <laughs> it was a, like, I'm a mum of four. I love getting out of the house when I can. Yeah. So it was something solely for me. Okay. But also I thought, well, how can I bring some form of awareness about why I'm doing this as well? And I think a lot of it is grief too, holding on to something and hopefully just letting go of a bit of that weight too. I remember at I can't remember who said it, but I can remember this analogy of like, imagine if you were carrying rocks all day long mm. and then at the end of the day you finally let go of them, how light your arms feel and how tired your body is but lighter because you've let go of this. And I feel like I get to a point where I'm light-ish but I'm not as light as I can be because I've still got this rock that I'm holding on to and haven't let go of yet. And I don't think we'll ever let go of, mm. but to a certain extent there were certain things that I needed to get rid of. And I'd always wanted to do a half marathon and I thought, well, why not do it for a purpose? Mm. And for for that it was my dad. And, you know, I'm sure we'll go more into it, but, the way that he passed was the purpose behind me picking a charity to either put money towards or to raise awareness for yeah. because what they do is tremendous. And if not for them, I think it would have been a lot harder for myself and my family to go on. After your runs then, with that analogy in mind with the rocks, um, after your run does – do, are the rocks chipped away at, do you think? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.